Hey guys, the boys are back in town. Back well, in town. Back at the Work Sharp factory. Came back today to uh, do a tour. It's gonna be awesome. We got something new for you. Something that pairs very well with the Benchmade Altitude. Ultralight. It's, it's gonna be sweet. Sweet. Work Sharp factory. Here we come. Hello, hey. We are at Work Sharp today and uh, pretty stoked about this because I've got a dull knife from Elk Season. Too. No, I got a big notch carved out of mine. This is my regular EDC bench made. We are in the coolest part of Work Sharp. This is like actually where the magic happens, like behind the scenes, right? Is that it what is? Yeah, this is the new product development area. We're out in the lab right now where we do all the, the fun stuff and all of our testing. This is like the secrets, top secret. We got a 3D printer over here with like some really really new technology yeah that we can't even show yeah yeah, yeah. off limit Not you yet. got stuff in your beard go yeah. nope still there might just leave it there you go got it all right so first of all so what we're going to do is show you this is steve by the way right yep does everybody know steve remember him from the last time we came here his beard's grown like six seven centimeters since then yeah maybe okay. right probably some of it fell out okay so we have these sharpeners at home and uh they're awesome 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 sharpeners and for anybody that wants to buy one and sharpen anything that they've got. There's different sizes of grit for the belts. So just kind of take us through that and sharpen the knife real quick. Okay. So this is our Ken Onion model. It comes with a P120 grit, an X65, X22, X4, and then a micro mesh 6000 grit belt. Um, the three in the middle here, the 65, 22, and four, are all, they're all Norton abrasives that go by micron size. So the smaller the number, the smaller the grit. It's a little bit backwards from normal. Oh, gotcha. So normally what we would do is, one, evaluate the knife, see how see how dull it is, how much damage there is. Trent uses that pretty much as a screwdriver. So It looks like it. Yeah, he's got a couple pretty decent sized chips in there. So Multi-tool. So I'm going to start with coarse grit. We're going to take a couple um, strokes with that, and we're going to get rid of all those chips for him. And then we'll just do a progression through the rest of the belts and get them nice and sharp. What are these angles here? So this one is adjustable from 15 to 30 degrees just okay. by turning this dial on the back side. You can see the, the different angles um, already on there. Gotcha. All highlighted in yellow. So I'm going to dial this knife up to 25 degrees. And is that about standard for, for outdoor knives? Outdoor knives, okay. okay. Yeah, it just gives you a, a thicker bevel, more durable. Um, the higher the the higher quality steel, like an S30V, you can actually put a pretty thin edge on it, and it'll withstand Retain that. Retain that. Yeah, if you get into some some lower end knives, um, cheaper steels, they just don't hold those thin angles. Gotcha. Twenty five. Yeah, not a benchmade. Okay. No. No, benchmade uses really good steel. It'll handle that all day long. But twenty five is that's my preferred outdoor knife. It's okay. just a good Sweet. durable edge. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna. Loop this belt around the pulleys. Let that tensioner go. Adjust our speed up a little bit. This, this model has adjustable speed, so the more you pull the trigger. So what do you recommend as far as speed-wise? Do you want it to go fast, slow, with certain um, belts? Or? I try to stay in the medium. Okay. So um, very low speed, we get l very low cooling. So if you're going to use it a lot, you can heat the machine up, possibly um, damage it. Oh, so gotcha. we try to keep the RPM up a little bit more so we can get some air running through there. But I also don't want to run, especially in the coarse belts, I don't want to run really fast because you can remove a little bit of material, little bit of material for it. And oh, gotcha, like, okay. like I said in the last videos, I'm a big fan of removing as little material as possible. We'll set it right about there so you kind of pull the trigger to go back the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what we call place, power, and pull. We're going to lay the knife in on the belt without it running. We're going to put it up against that guide. And then as soon as I power the machine, we're going to start pulling it through. And we're going to stop that tip as we're coming out of the guide at the midway point of the belt. Okay. If you, go, if you just pull it straight through, the back side of the belt is no longer supported, it'll want to turn and you run the risk of rounding the tip oh. off of your knife. So okay. 
Two important. Good point. Good two point. Two important points. Done this um, wrong too many that's times. That's why we're here. Place power pull and stop in the middle of the belt. Gotcha. Okay. So we'll place. What we're looking for is just to create that burr we talked about. Mm -hmm. Right, a little burr. Yeah, so, we have, yeah. so we got a burr all the way across. But I know we got to do a little bit of work because we got some chips. I'm gonna give it another another pull through on that side. Switch over to the other side. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're just gonna come over to the other side. And you're just yeah. using this as a guide. This this plate as a guide to just go because yes. that's your angle. Yep. Okay. This is where we dial. So when we dial this the angle in on the knob in the back, these guides are moving out. Perfect. To adjust your angle. So gotcha. place it up against there. Don't apply a lot of force. Okay. So okay. Just, when you place it in here, it's just, just enough to keep them. You know, just kind of like basically want to fly out, float out of there. Yeah. Okay. So if you push too hard, when you come off the back of that guide, you're going to fall out the oh, bottom okay. side of it, and you'll scratch up the knife and maybe damage your toe. So we're going to place that in there, just like we did. Stop the halfway point. One more stroke. You always want to do even strokes so you keep your knife symmetrical. Mm -hmm. you remember. Chips are gone, okay. so we're done with the 120. We're gonna go through. So now, this is like you like sparingly only when you have nicks. You only did two strokes. strokes. Like resetting completely. Yes. Yeah, okay. if you're doing a, a reshape, you're like trying to go from a 25. If you have another knife, you want to take it up to a 17. Definitely use it. Um, it'll get you there a lot faster. Okay. Or okay. if it's damaged, like chips, or you broke a tip off, or you're doing some repair work, that type of thing. But or if, if it's just really dull. But if you're just trying to touch it up. Yeah, if you're just trying to touch it you up. You start here. Um, I would either start with the X65 or the 22. If you're just, I mean, if you keep it up, if you keep your knives very sharp, you can just go back to like the X22. If you're sharpening more, okay. more and more often. Gotcha. Um, otherwise, gotcha. yeah, you can you can jump into the X65. Okay. So we're just gonna do a couple strokes of each. Here. And at this point, we've already raised the burr, so we know we've reached that apex. So now I'm just gonna go back and forth. Definitely did this wrong in the past. I had it in where it's constant power and all the way through. Oh yeah, the the issue with running a constant power, um, and you bring up a great point, um, is when you place the um, when you place the knife in there, you'll notice as I drop it in, you'll see that belt deflect. Mm -hmm. You'll see that belt mm -hmm. move in. Well, once you start touching the belt, you're grinding. Mm -hmm. So that entire time while you're going down to the bottom of the guide changed, and get into place, that, you're, you're grinding in one wow. spot. Gotcha. So you're going to grind a lot more material there. I see what you're saying. And you'll end up creating a big swell in the back. Mm -hmm. That's why we do the place power and pull. That's okay. What we've done Copy. So now we're just repeating what we've done. You want to pull it through about an inch per second. Inch per second. Yep, so if you have a four inch plate, it should take you, you know, approximately four seconds to pull that blade through. Looking pretty good. And you also don't have to go through all the belts either. You could jump through one. Yep, one of my favorite edges is for my EDC, my pocket knives, is to go through, if I have to go back to the 120, and I'll skip straight to the 6000. Oh, really? So, because what we're doing right now is we're going through a progression of belts, finer and finer grits, and we're refining that edge, and we're taking out the scratch pattern and the teeth, that those little jagged edges. So that kind of leaves a rougher, but then probably. Yeah. So we'll leave a really toothy edge with the 120, and you'll come back in at the 6,000. It removes a very little amount of material, basically just polishing all those edges, mm -hmm. but it leaves you a really nice toothy edge. So depending on what you're cutting, the hide, rope, um, that type of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really okay. Well. I see. So now we're down to X4. There you go. Looking good. You got a nice crisp edge. And if we spend a little bit more time, you can start to see some pretty good reflection on there now with the lights above us. Yeah. Um, you spend a little bit more time with the other belts, you can get all those scratch patterns out of it, and this X4 will leave just a mirror polish on gotcha. there. Gotcha. Just really nice, but. 
You pretty much don't have hair left. Sharp. Sure. How many times have you shaved yeah. right there? Not on, not on this hand. <laughs> <laughs> Enough for, I guess, some permanent nicks. There you go. <laughs> so it doesn't even need the super, super fine. Um, I generally yeah, I'll stop sharp. at the, the, the X4. Um, gotcha. If you really want to get crazy with it, we could take it to the to But the for an app, we're just in every day. Yep. No, that's plenty sharp. Yeah. Good and shaven. Yeah. So. Cool. And no nicks. Hello. Thanks. For, thank you very much, man. Uh, you're welcome. So. The cool new product that we want to show you guys that we actually are pretty excited about for this year. If you'll remember in the last video, in the last project, we had the Benchmade, the yeah. WorkSharp um, Benchmade sharpener. Yeah, the guided field sharpener. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's really bigger. Yeah. I wish yeah. we had yeah. one. Yeah. There's one. one. Yeah. Size-wise, overall length, similar, except for the, but this is what, like 1.6 ounces, 1.7 ounces yeah. is what I weighed in there. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot like thicker too, full full way weight. way yeah. thicker than that. Super thin, way way lighter weight. It's um, pairs perfectly with this. Yes. So it's called the pocket knife sharpener, or the pocket knife sharpener, or the pocket knife sharpener. sharpener. Right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> We're clear. We're so clear. Many names. Ultralight sharpener is what we've trying to vote for, but turns out we don't have stock in the company. So, so. that's. I don't mm -hmm. know. We skinned a couple bulls on that last year. Might be some blood still. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Not too bad. Yeah, it's definitely been used. It's a little bit grabby, but got a little bit of a couple little rolled spots on it and stuff. So, with the uh, pocket knife sharpener, we have the, it's all guided. So you have your guides built into it, same as we do here on the guided field sharpener. Right. So we'll place the knife on the guide. We'll hold that angle through the entire stroke of the knife, um, one side of it has a diamond plate, the other side has a fine ceramic. Again, all guided, so what we're gonna do, we'll just start here, start it back at the heel of the knife, slide it right down to the diamond. I'm just gonna take a few strokes on there. Again, light pressure with the diamond. So the same work. side for a few different strokes, it doesn't have to be vice versa. Yep. Okay. Same, same type of thing we did when we were using the power the units. Big, the the big we want to okay. get that. Yep. We, want to, we want to feel that burr. Okay. And so we did about four or five strokes on there. We've already developed a little bit of a burr on there. Gotcha. So now we're going to come back to the other side. We're going to give it that same amount of strokes. And we're going to make sure we got a burr full length on the other side, which we do. So at that point, we can switch over to the ceramic side, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Just hold it on the guide, light pressure, except now we're just going to alternate. Oh, okay. Because once you've reached the, the apex on both sides, you get a burr on both sides, yep. now you can just swap back swap and forth. Back for okay. Because we know we've reached that apex. I was really, really impressed last, uh, last year in elk season we skinned quite a few bulls with the same knife and you could go through i mean like the first time i went through almost two just over two elk before i had to sharpen it but all i used was the ceramic side and i just did like six strokes on each side if that it i took think like no three to three on each yeah, six total no yeah. time at all and yeah. it was razor sharp if you keep them and that's the great thing about them and having tools like this is if you keep your knives tuned up yeah it takes you like a minute yeah it's not not touch it. exactly. As soon as you notice that difference, I mean, when you guys are stop. in the middle of a bull, as soon as you notice the difference, stop, I'll touch it up, up, you'll keep going. Ultimately, by the end of it, it's going to save you time. Don't let it get dull. Exactly. Because then you start cutting yourself. And yeah, ceramic's a great way to keep that nice and touched up. I'm back to shaving again. I like it. Cool. Yeah. Go. Yeah, so, just that quick. where can we get the, uh, where can everybody get the work sharp? pocket knife sharpener. It'll be available at Sportsman's Warehouse okay. and Amazon and direct um, from us at WorkshopTools.com. Perfect. Perfect. We lo I love this sharpener actually. It was awesome, but it is heavier. This thing will pair perfect. And it's like Steve said, you just, once it starts to get just a little bit dull, take a few swipes on it, touch it up. Simple, lightweight, guys. It's it's pretty awesome. Thank you, you for the demo, away? man. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Hey. Appreciate All right. you guys coming down. So, we just got the AOK. -okay. We're gonna give ten of these away. All right. We're giving so, ten away. Ten away. That's awesome. Nice. Uh, so comment below what knife you want to sharpen with your pocket knife sharpener from WorkSharp. 
Yeah. And we'll pick 10 randomly on the comments below. So, yeah. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Everybody wins. Perfect. Everybody wins. That's the way it should be. Exactly. Um, anything else you can think of? We covered it all. You guys working um, on some new stuff all the time? Yeah. 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 I got a really cool one right now that I'm excited about. Just can't show you. Just busting at the seams? Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, I hope that helped anybody that's learning how to sharpen your knives. These things are so awesome. We use them for all of our meat prep, for all of our cutting and stuff like that. And then in the field... My kitchen knives, too. Uh, yeah. Go oh, through, yeah. yeah. And then in the field, we use the we use the small one now, and I cannot wait to bust into that this hunting season. So, hope this helps you guys.